Brood. So I'll just kick it off. Welcome everyone to the ARPA, the joint uh, ARPA committee of the Board of Finance and Town Council. Um, and we're here to uh, address the uh, proposed uh, funding initiatives uh, brought to the Board of Selectmen, um, which include four items uh, right now. Um, and apologize, they are the uh, information and technology cybersecurity for $250,000, the Mead Park Flexi Pave Trail for $300,000, um, the uh, tree planting for roads and parks of $200,000, the uh, VFW, VFW funding for $15,000, and the YMCA Emergency Shelter Public Private Partnership of $400,000. Um, and I guess. Uh, Margaret, why don't we just jump right into the YMCA since that's the one that probably, um, and I see pennies on the line as well, where, where there may be more questions. And, and Mark Robbins, thanks for also joining us and taking us through this. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, just, there was one point of clarification that I thought was worth making after last meeting, as I know you're all familiar with what was um, discussed at the Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, but this project does not contemplate simply the acquisition of a generator. It's a CHP system that has specific black start functionality, meaning yes. that it will- I'm, 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 two, I'm two minutes from- uh, Penny, can you just mute? Um, sorry. That's terrible. So it will service the Y 24-7, 365 days a year. So we have this a benefit to one of the town's largest nonprofits on a daily basis, um, a capital project that reduces our operating expenses, but also a direct benefit from to the town because you're acquiring the infrastructure for us to work as your reliable emergency shelter. Not just can we get a generator here, but we're already set up to be your emergency shelter. Um, you know, one, one question uh, that I might that I have, and maybe Mark could help me with this one, is is I saw in the presentation that you compared a CHP unit to just a, a you know, what you would normally be doing in an emergency situation, which is uh, bring in a um, a generator uh, and the costs around that. I guess my question is, would a backup standby generator that's on that's put in place since you already have natural gas? Um, you know, be a better comparable or am I off on that one? Because the, the kilowatts are too great to have a standby generator uh, on, on premises. So um, if you could just, just so I answer your question accurately, um, you are asking uh, if uh, to compare functionality or cost or? Well, co or in the presentation, you were comparing a CHP to uh, the cost of bringing in a generator during, uh, you know, a blackout uh, to help from an emergency standpoint. And I'm just why why not? Could the uh, YMCA put in a standby generator like people have in their homes that's ready to kick in the minute power goes out? That would uh, essentially take care of all the power needs. Right. So if they didn't do the CHP project. They, they certainly could do a standby generator. Um, the cost of that, it's won't, it won't be any cheaper to do that all in. There will be no efficiency or operational savings or envir environmental benefits. And it the um, thesis of the presentation with the information that was uh, provided to us from the uh, US Department of Energy slide compares the efficacy of a standby generator to a continuously running CHP system designed with Black Start. And the point there being that statistically, it is more likely uh, that the standby designed to be operating 24 seven base load um, CHP power system is statistically more likely to be on in the event of a weather incident. And we looked at flooding, high winds, earthquake, wildfire, snow, ice, and extreme temperature. And so it's statistically more likely to be running. And it also provides a continuous power supply that doesn't require logistics for uh, fueling it, periodically fueling it. Um, and um, 
so that but uh, that maybe that answers the question. So so Mark, um, correct me and, and Margaret, is the entire cost of uh, putting this uh, this system in was the number two million? Was that correct the, for the the whole system? And and this would be a uh, four hundred thousand dollar contribution towards that. It, the purpose being obviously helping the grid be more efficient for the Y, making sure we have um, the emergency location. It, those kind of all benefits of it. Um, but Mark, you're saying now, and and I really I, the environmental stuff. I really love the fact that you're going to take wasted heat and heat the pools. I mean, it just all really makes a heck of a lot of sense to me on that. But just to get back to Mark's question, ignoring all that, it would cost, if we had a permanent blackout, blackout backup generator there, that would be the same cost as this $2 million? A high, high level. Um, so no, it's not $2 million. So project costs we're looking at, we're getting into it. We need to know before we get deeper into the cost of actual technical design mm -hmm. and bidding out all the parts and pieces, we need to know the scope. So the scoping question we have is capacity of the system. Is it is it going to be upsized to power the building uh, to provide power in a, in a storm? And what happens with these on energy projects, these CHP systems are typically, they produce two things, thermal and electric energy. So right in there, you can imagine there's a benefit to this generator that's not just producing electricity, but it's producing heat. Yep. In the case of a, of a blackout scenario, it's producing hot water that we're going to enjoy for showers or space heat. So it produces two things, electricity and thermal energy or heat. Um, if we know going into the project that we wanted to have the option, uh, the functionality of being able to carry the building in a storm, that's an upgrade cost, and that's effectively reflected in the 400000 If we don't have the 400000 we're not designing the system to um, act as a uh, as a shelter, and that changes the the scope and spec and cost, and that redirects the project development. So we're sixty percent our way into the project development. We're evaluating various pieces of equipment, not just the, our initial cost, but also the maintenance cost, which is significant, and also determining what of those components would comply with the newly re released federal IRA Inflation Reduction Act, which has some co-funding that we're looking to leverage also supplementally to help buy down the project cost. So yes, they could do a diesel generator, if you will. Um, problem there is that it sits in the location that we're looking to put the CHP system. So we're sort of site limited in terms of real estate that's appropriate tucked away in the in that uh, limited space for the building. And um, uh, so that this is both a more, um, uh, it's a neater application from a real estate and, and location perspective, right? So there's limited site area. Uh, so this is certainly a better, it's better to upgrade your CHP system to have a generator versus just doing a generator. Yeah. Doing, if there's no payback, so one thing people say, well, Mark, what's the payback? What's the ROI? What's the savings? If we were just to look at investing in a generator, it's an insurance policy, but I can't tell you what the payback or savings is, but there is a savings or payback on the CHP system that helps us underwrite and underwrite the project and secure funding for the balance of the cost. Hey, Mark. I, really, I should add, excuse me, Amy, sorry. Um, okay. I just wanted to add one other point on that issue. Um, the Y is not currently contemplating an investment in a generator. Um, we're contemplating investment in an energy plan and would happily undertake this additional expense um, with the town support with ARPA funds. But really our primary concern is a reduction in operating costs. Right. Um, and so we're looking at a project will that, that will yield that benefit to us and this additional benefit to the town. Um, if, if the town wanted to invest in a generator to put at the Y, that's a different conversation. But Really, we're looking to reduce our operating costs to put us in a better position to recover from COVID sooner. Got it. Got it. Hey, just one um, one question. So, um, the reason these uh, systems 
you know, are basically kind of insulated when you have uh, weather events, right, emergent, is it because we all, as long as it has access to the natural gas it operates, is that correct? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So you have a continuous supply, and that's our that's our newest, um, most sophisticated and robust um, fuel source in in town. Our our electric lines are uh, pretty iffy, but our newly installed uh, continuous natural gas line um, is more robust, and their building would remain both grid connected to both electric and gas sources. So effectively, with CHP your base load power is actually coming from gas and the grid is your backup, but the building does effectively remain connected to both the electric and gas grid. So you have redundancy, they have inherent redundant power sources um, uh, from that. I see Kevin jumped on and he could probably give you a little more color on this, but just as a, a data point, Mark, um, it now, now Russ did a, you know, um, unbiased evaluation of the efficacy of the high school uh, versus the, the, the YMCA for a shelter. But that being said, uh, if you were to install a diesel generator, for example, at the high school, keep in mind that it does require maintenance. It does need to be sited. It does need a tank and a pad and fire suppression. It's not just the thing itself, but the permitting design and maintenance of it. Um, and uh, it's not a pretty sight. A generator that big is uh, there's a lot of noxious output to it and a lot of noise. This won't be the case with the CHP system design uh, with a much cleaner, lower emission and quieter operation. But that being said, if you were to just to do the high school, I believe that number is probably closer to a million dollar number that I've heard. Um, evoke from time to time what it would take to put a like size to generate enough standby power to, to make it a comparable shelter. It's probably a million dollar investment in high school versus the ARPA fund, using the ARPA funds to leverage the upgrade mm -hmm. is 400,000. So just on a dollar. And again, even if you had the million dollars for the generator at the high school, there's no ROI, there's no payback. Right. And there's no environmental benefit. Yeah, I mean, the, the, look, the one thing is you guys are looking at to the energy source of the future plopping a generator in to use occasionally is almost like going backwards. You know, I mean, it's environmentally not good. It's not used all the time. It doesn't benefit you except when power goes down. This allows us to, with a, helping you out with this, allows us to make sure we have a good emergency shelter place in a facility that has the water, the showers, the space. It, it, it makes a lot of sense. And environmentally, it's, it's very positive. And I didn't realize until I watched the, or uh, until the board of selectmen meeting that you are the largest consumer of electricity in town. So reducing that is obviously a net benefit for the base load coming in. So, um, and I do, I do remember 10 years ago having to use the Y when a tree fell on my, on my house. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, we'd like to reliably be here. I mean, I, as I said to the Board of Selectmen, I, I'm not saying that we won't serve as your shelter if, if we don't get this project done, um, but this makes us able to serve, <clears throat> not just willing to serve, but able to serve as your shelter. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mark, yes, can, um, on that point, you know, people don't realize that in August, you know, uh, usually in August, sometimes in July, uh, Eversource will tell us to shut off our power at Town Hall and you go on our emergency generator because of the lack of electricity. Uh, yeah. To fully power our, our and so having the Y off the grid is a huge addition to to the sustainability of Duquesne. So, yeah, this seems like a terrific use of ARPA money to me. Yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it hits it on so many points. I think it's very exciting. Hey, hey Penny, you're muted, and I just want to make sure you have the ability to ask a question. I would unmute if I had one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Penny. Okay, good. Just, just dotting my eyes and crossing my okay well right um amy do you have any any other questions i um... no i think i think it's great i think it's really exciting i would yeah, i would right. make one other comment that you know you know we we picked picked four hundred thousand dollars out of the air um toward what we thought was going to be a 1.2 million dollar project it looks like it's going to be a more like a 1.6 million dollar project and you know the board of finance has the ability to increase 400 to 500 if they want to so so uh, I'll make that okay. point. Yeah, I remember. I remember you made that point at the board of selectmen meeting, and if that is something that you know happens at the board of finance level, then 
Uh, Kevin, I, do you mean uh, adding it from ARPA money or just from town ARPA money? money? ARPA money. You know, again, we have ARPA money left. And I just think yep. that you know, just so people realize the 400 was initially on a smaller estimated project than what is going to be required to fully. You know, you, you really, other than the pools, you need to fully, for an emergency shelter, you need to fully support the building. Right. Right. So the, the all-in cost is, re, re, is we think, 1.6. Is that right? Did I get there? Did I hear Could that right? More. Pardon me? Could be more. But. Yeah. Okay. We're working from a range right now, Mark, right? Um, right. We're working from a range. Um, and, and like, so there's a lot of factors. So this is not a standby generator that we hope turns on, but this is yeah. a robust infrastructure equipment with a lot of switch gear. Um, that is designed to run 24-7 for 20 years. So a lot more uh, uh, technology and engineering is involved in this. The 500,000 would really help us on a lot of levels. Um, for example, when you think of buying a car, uh, same with CHP equipment, the more expensive equipment um, has lower, often has lower maintenance operating costs. So, you know, like with anything, you know, like when you're buying a printer, <laughs> um, some of you, you pay up for the ink, but it lasts longer. So we're looking to install, you know, a very robust, um, uh, a resilient system here with a lot of thought behind it. And 500,000 would significantly help us close some of the critical budget gaps on um, the electric. So, so, so you guys at Board of Selectmen, you guys gave the go ahead for four. Mark, am I hearing that five is a better number for you guys? Yes. So is are you somebody going to be at the Board of Finance meeting on um, Tuesday? Yeah. So well, obviously you're there, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, I would also remind people that you know, we, we, we looked at a CHP uh, project that was going to be $10 million behind the high school and, and supply energy to South uh, High School, Sachs, YMCA, and Waving Care Center. Instead, we've done this distributed system um, with yeah. each, each facility having its own support. And uh, so it's. Yeah, I, I, I think this is great. And I think if if a higher ask is appropriate, I think you should ask it. Right. My personal opinion, I think it's just like it's environmental. It, it helps the town grid system, gives us the backup we need. And I'm how much would it reduce your operating expenses? I mean, do you have that's kind of. You know, because you're a town at you're not you're nonprofit, but you're kind of town asset. So I think all those things really um, a uh, very very big payback on this. Could be up to you know hundreds of thousands a year. Yeah, it's huge. Very very significant. It's huge. It, what's the break? It's probably what three three and a half four years. Is that a fair way to think about it? Have you run that yet, Mark? Yeah. So with the five hundred thousand. Yeah. And assuming with the 500,000, again, we've got a range. So we're getting into it. You know, when you retrofit an old building, we've got to have a contingency, a contingency here, which is something that, you know, again, the 500,000 would really help us. It's effectively two buildings. You know, as you know, they've got a new addition and that's got its own electrical service and voltage. And then there's the old building. So we're merging circuits. We're upgrading, um, you know, a lot of the electrical equipment for resiliency and safety. So we do it once for the next 20 years. Um, and we want this system to operate, you know, at peak performance. Uh, so assuming, so capital stack, assuming 500,000, we're looking at a system between a million seven and 2 million right now, plus or minus 5%. Okay, and that a lot of that depends on the actual equipment we're able to secure, and you know, um, COVID-related supply chain inflation. But a million seven to two million rough project range. So um, pick a number in between million eight. We assume the five hundred thousand ARPA funds to decapitalize project cost. We're going to assume between we're we're assuming thirty percent funding, federal funding, direct pay under this. And the portal's not up. There's no application form. So we're just reading this bill. But it looks like 30, we could qualify 30 to 40% copay a check. It's called direct pay option for nonprofits. They've got to wait a year and a half to get the application in. And then the subsequent, after the project's installed, they they uh, this reconciles when they file their federal income tax. So we've got bridge financing we've got to address, right? You get the rebate from the right, feds, right. but it's not until the project is fully completed, we paid all the vendors, then we're commissioned. We have a proof of concept report, and then she gets the rebate on their subsequent uh, tax filing. So, but, so to get back to your question, 
if we line up the stars and we get an extra bump in federal funds, if we can use either majority American assembled equipment and or if needed um, prevailing wage. So the pros and cons to all of that. But that being said, I think a five-year payback is very is very reasonable, five-year payback. And if the cost of energy continues to accelerate like it has been, the, cost, the payback may occur in year four. Yeah, okay. and look, that, that payback does not put any value on the fact that we as a town then have an emergency shelter. Those are, those are things that you, yeah, it's hard to put a value on, right? So, I mean, there's, there's that as well. So, yes. cool. so um, since I don't think we have any more questions, uh, is I, I, I thank you, Margaret and Mark, for your for your time. Um, probably best to keep moving on here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, where Mr. McGlynn was there, and now he's gone, but we'll probably touch on the the VFW. If we don't have any questions, we we can. Um, just keep moving on. Uh, it's hey, Mark, I can't stay on. I've got to go back to this training session. And unfortunately, Tiger I couldn't join because he's over at uh, meeting with Metro North. Well, yeah, and I, I talked to Chris and uh, Amy and, and Penny. The one question I had while, while we wait uh, for the um, for cybersecurity was, um, you know, I said, hey, listen, is this a ongoing expense? And should we be thinking about this as a operating or uh, you know an operating expense versus a capital, um, you know as we as Amy, you and I and Penny have talked about trying to think more on not supporting operating. Uh, so Chris addressed my question in a in a thorough manner, and I just wanted to uh, uh, echo his comments. And I'll forward you the email that he just sent me. But um, um, uh, you know, he, he'd rather get this work done sooner rather than later. Um, and with uh, the new cybersecurity insurance and recent mitigating factors, he's got to spend the money now rather than later. And it is going to be a line item. Obviously, it is a line item in the budget, um, but uh, this is essentially pulling forward work, correct me if I'm wrong, that needs to be done um, with the massive amount of attacks and whatnot that's coming over the internet. So. Um, um, I think it's an appropriate use of our funds. I, I do too. I just wanted to, for the sake of the public, understand. You know, we weren't looking, um, you know, as the board of finance did with security at the schools, wanted to address that through the budget. Um, I just wanted to address that question from the same um, line of questioning, and um, you know, that that was the answer. Yeah. I didn't probably do a good job of. Summarizing Mark, his email. You know, Todd Laviero will be all over this because uh, this is his forte. His ISG is a technology consulting firm. So, so Todd yeah. will have lots to say about this on Tuesday. Yeah. No, I was just simply looking at it. Should this be something we just increase in the budget? But Chris said, hey, I need that money. I'd rather have that money now, not wait for another budget cycle. And we need to get on this. So, yeah, uh, just, look at, just, forward, just, just yeah. pointing that out to, to, to everyone in the public um, that this is a good use of, of, of ARPA. Yeah. Um, so before we jump off, I just um, any guidance you have for us, or I guess my question is, will there be a member of this call uh, supporting the project and making the ask at the Board of Finance? And are you equipped with information? I'm there, but you guys are going to be there. So if people want to, I mean, it's it's a great project to profile. So yeah, and Russ will be there. So yeah, same thing, Mark and Margaret at the town council. It, it, it'll uh, Penny and I and the other two members who are not present uh, of, of this committee will be be there and um, we'll kick things off for you. Have Hi. you already covered trees or not trees? We we yeah. haven't covered that. Yeah. But <laughs> since you have any questions about the trees, I, no. <laughs> uh, I, I, I I don't really have a question. I have a suggestion on the trees um, that, especially with the drought situation we have and stuff like that, I just wonder, does it make sense that part of this money as we put in trees, we also get, I think they're called girdles or whatever they, you know, the, those green things you wrap around the tree and fill them with water so that the trees don't die, you know? And also, does it make sense when we're putting these trees in to have some sort of barrier around them because 
these trees, not in the park so much, but like on the, you know, the town property along South Avenue, if landscapers are taking care of them, I just worry about them getting like weed whacked and killed. So I just, I just think you want it. You don't want it. You don't want to put a tree in that dies. So that's, that's, I just think that maybe yeah. that might be a good investment yeah. for us. Yeah. You know, that's the, the, the property on South Avenue belongs to the state is a state road and mm -hmm. we have to get their permission to plant these trees. So. No, I, I know that, but I'm just saying when we no, plant the one. Yeah. They, they plant a lot of trees on the Merritt Parkway that die. So. Yeah. So let's, I'm thinking some of the money we should use to make sure we, we buy these reusable, what are they called? Collars or whatever. So that mm -hmm. the trees as they go in, um, you know, that they live. That, right. That's, I just think it, that might be a good use of some of the money. And then as a town, we would, every time we put a tree in, we would have a stash of these to use. I, you just hate to watch them, you put them in and they die, you know? Yeah. So, no, no, I don't have any questions on trees other than. Okay. Uh, I fully support the VFW, but I got to go back to this training session, which most, all of our first responders are in. Okay. All right, Kevin, thanks for joining. Thanks. Okay, bye. Uh, I, I guess the uh, one, the one, Amy and Penny, the one, <laughs> the one thing that, that I, I love planting trees for beautification, but you know, I also think, you know, when you drive around this town, there's still more pruning. And speaking of the grid reliability, trees are our biggest issue. So, but we we spend money on taking trees down, and to some extent, the utility is responsible for part of it, um, and the homeowner is also responsible, but. I understand the need here. I understand the need for to spend money on open space, which is the flat, you know, the, the flexi pave in in the park. So I understand the needs and and the balance that we need to to have with the ARPA funding. So um, I don't have too many questions beyond that on on those or too many things to say on those issues, unless you guys do. No, my only thing with I mean I'm really supportive of them replenishing the trees to the extent. We, I know it's a they got to work at the state road and stuff, but to the extent there can be some interaction with the homeowner, I know it's not their land, but you know people look at it as part to get if we can get people to buy into taking care of these. I know that sounds silly, but you hate to put it in and then it just dies. So why is it the homeowner's responsibility to take care of the tree? Um, I mean, I, if we're going to plant them, I think the town should take care of them. The town should water them. They should girdle them. They should, you know, do whatever needs to be done, but not the homeowner. Because homeowners don't necessarily know how to take care of a tree or reliably water them. No, I don't mean that it's the responsibility, but it's great if we get... You know, it's great if you're planning in front of somebody's house is excited about the tree and will help take care of it. I mean, I would, if they put it in my land, I would do everything I can to help and some other people might not. So I'm just thinking we're going to put them in. Let's, let's let them be successful. That's why I was saying that if we want them to be successful and the only way to do that is if we are in charge of their watering and their um, pest control or what else um, might be necessary. The homeowner itself is not going to do that, and it's not on their property. So why are why would they feel responsible? You know, we have a watering truck. We can get Jacobs to water them. Yeah, I just think let's get the girdles. Let's get the girdles. That helps in the town. Yeah, but the girdles have to be filled with water. So I know. Yeah. Well, you, you guys are the tree experts, clearly. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I told you about my incident earlier, so I'm very suspect of trees I, on rocky on rocky land like Connecticut. They just don't anchor to anything, and they're prone to fall. So um, you got to be careful as a homeowner uh, to prune and whatnot. Anyway, that's my public service announcement for the day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So mo 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 moving on to the VFW. Yes. Thank okay. you for joining, Michael. Just uh, uh, this is obviously uh, overdue for the uh, as we uh, and appreciate your uh, coming on. And, uh, well, it's important to us. It's important to all of us. Agreed. Yeah, we we live on uh, donations, one hundred percent. That's our, our total survival. 
Well, you have you have our support, and uh, I, uh, you know, it's almost eleven one. Does anyone have any questions? Because I think at this point no. we just we just uh, think uh, we're all we good. Do we have to vote on all of them or can we just vote across the board or do we have anything that we want to do we want to vote one by one how is the what's the just what, making sure we're good on flexi paid we because we we didn't talk about that one right? we're, we're good on that I, I mentioned it in terms of open space you know okay. I, I i thought in the beginning of the arpa that you know yeah. given the use of of town property during during covid that a portion i don't know what it was i mean chris shipper would say it should be let's say 30% should go to open space. Um, this kind of fits into the open space category for me. I I do think we the open space is something we are addressing from ARPA and this is a probably a good a good use of funds. I that, agree. That, I just wanted to make sure we just mentioned yeah. it. It's good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so um I'm fine with all of them. Same. Okay. Okay. I same. So, yep. All right. So they all move on. So Amy, they're in the Board of Finance hands and uh Okay, great. So, yeah, Mar okay. Margaret and Mark will hopefully see some of you guys on Tuesday. That'd be great. Yes, thank you. Thanks so much thanks, for your time this morning. Thanks, thanks, thanks everybody. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Right. Appreciate it. Bye now. Bye.